Okay guys, hello everyone, and Merry Christmas, I hope you had a good Christmas. Uh, here we are on week three of Workout Wednesday for Rowan King, so good to be back, to burn off some of those calories that you've undoubtedly piled on over the last few days. But if you haven't done that, you probably should have, because that's, that's what Christmas is all about, right? Yeah, so uh, th thanks for joining those of you uh, who are with us. We've got a, a, a new session for you today. The session is a strength in endurance session. So the, the idea is we become uh, a stronger athlete as a result of this session, but also we're working on our, our muscular endurance. So again, it's all critical stuff really for anyone who rides a bike. So it's helping you. Yeah, it's, a, it's an aerobic session, it's just helping you become just stronger, fitter, all around really. So the first thing we're doing at the moment is just warming up. And this is the easy part of the session, so nice and steady. You know, cho chosen cadence, whatever you feel comfortable with. And again, this isn't an explosive session, so there's no need to uh, you know, complete a really thorough, tough, tough, uh, tough warm-up. This is pretty, pretty steady, so yeah, we're going to have a five minute gentle warm up, slowly progressing, and then we're going to get straight into it. Uh, and the session is it's two, two 12 minute blocks of spiked zone three. So a few people are probably thinking, what the hell is this spiked zone three all about? Well, we ride a zone three. So the power output for zone three will vary between us all, um, and every every four minutes, there's a little spike in effort. So we go from zone three up to zone five for 20 seconds. And then the critical bit of this session is all done at a low cadence. So again, it is a strength-based session. Um, so you, even those even those spikes need to be completed at a low cadence. So just to run that through in real terms, in a couple of minutes time, so in two minutes, 15 time, we can start our first 12 minute block. We're gonna settle into a rhythm at zone three. And your power will be displayed up on the left hand side for you all. So we'll be riding at zone three. And every four minutes, we're gonna complete a spike up to zone five. It's only gonna last 20 seconds, so it'll be quite intense, but it's very short. And that's designed to obviously stimulate your muscles more, put, put, put a bit of effort in, um, your legs probably produce some lactic acid, and then you can settle back into zone three without recovering. So the idea is there you become a lot more efficient at, uh, at recovering. You, your, le your legs essentially get used to producing lactic and not getting a complete recovery setting it back into your zone three steady state uh, position so get warm already so i've just uh just before christmas i done a new i done a new, uh, an ftp test to recalibrate my zones so my zones have all been slightly adjusted upwards which is quite cool which is good, but it does make all my sessions harder. It's all in the name of training, right? So we've got another 45 seconds left of warming up. It's nice and steady. It's ticking along. And then we're going to start our effort. And the first thing, well, before we start the effort, sorry, there's going to be a minute of complete recovery. So we've warmed up a little bit, elevated our heart rate. Got the, leg, got the legs uh, pumping, blood flowing. We have an easy minute, have a quick drink, and then we'll set straight into it. As I said earlier, this isn't a long warm up because the session isn't explosive, it doesn't need to be. I'm just gonna send a quick message to someone who's. Uh, okay, guys. You should all now, if you're following the session, you should have suddenly got a little bit easier. And this is your minute recovery. 
This is total recovery. It's getting ready for the session. So nice and easy. And then we're going to start our 12 minute block at a low cadence. So optimum cadence, really what we're looking for is between 55 and 60 revs a minute. So that'll feel quite strenuous. And again, if, if you start this effort and you don't feel comfortable or your knees hurt at all, you feel any, any sort of twinging or pain, back straight off. And just complete the session as you would normally at your chosen cadence, whether that's 85, 90, 100 revs a minute, whatever you normally ride at, that's absolutely fine. So, 10 seconds. Here we go. Okay, guys, find your zone three. And this shouldn't be too, too challenging. You know, it's about 80% of your FTP so again it's not too too challenging this type of effort you can make for well over an hour you know hour and a half two hours if, if push comes to shove you could physically do it so a 12 minute block shouldn't feel too hard so just kind of calibrate where you're at if you're if you just settled into this session now and you're finding it quite tough perhaps use the use the up and down hours on the left hand side to tweak tweak the effort uh, efforts resistance so you can yeah use the down hour to make it slightly easier for you i.e. reducing every zone by a little bit or you can make it a bit harder if you're suddenly feeling good but just this should be not too demanding just kind of you know put pressing on a little bit but nothing nothing, nothing much more again nice slow cadence 55 to 60 is what you're looking for. Just to focus on developing your strength. You try to keep your body nice and smooth, nice and still. Pedaling smooth, sorry. And letting all the force come from your, your hips down. So again, your, the, the stiller you can keep your body, the more efficient you're going to become. So at this low cadence, this helps, or well, this is an opportunity for you to become yeah, more, more efficient in your, with your pedaling stroke. So you know, focus on pushing down on the downstroke, but also scooping those pedals around the bottom and pulling the pedals up or dragging them up, really engaging your hamstring, hamstrings on the upstroke. And again, by putting that pressure out around 360 degrees of the stroke, you're going to become a lot more efficient with your power transfer and ultimately lead to you becoming a yeah a more efficient faster stronger bike rider because when you then revert back to normal cadence of yeah circa 100 revs a minute 90 to 100 revs a minute then you've perfected the art of pedaling efficiently around the whole 360 degrees of the stroke if you can transfer that to more of a normal cadence then you're going to be yeah, a, a, a stronger more efficient bike rider which is the aim of the game. So in 30 seconds, we've got our first spike. I always like to, when I do these spikes, get my drops, so the drops of the bars, just to feel a bit more of an aggressive race position for the big effort just for the 20 second then i'll kind of revert back to riding on the tops of the hoods so guys we've got five seconds to go okay Okay guys, and back to zone three. So 
so that shouldn't have been massively taxing you're not absolutely blowing now you should be able to slot straight back into your zone three but that was a, a spike up to zone five which is uh you know it's kind of an anaerobic zone because we're only in there for 20 seconds it's not too demanding as long as you can recover back in zone three Just keep check yourself to where where you're at power wise it's easy to drift so just keep checking you're in the right zone if you're not that means you're not quite completing the session that we're prescribing here so uh yeah just keep checking where you're at just regulate your zone or regulate your power output to make sure you're in the in the right zone That's good. So for me, I'm just starting to catch my breath a bit more now. Starting to recover, the legs are coming round. Obviously over time, hopefully, you'll see you, yourself, recovering quicker. Obviously that, that'll happen as your fitness increases and you become a fitter bike rider. It should get to the stage, hopefully, where you can complete these short 20 second zone 5 spikes and within 20 or 30 seconds after the effort you're kind of feeling back to back to normal where your legs are quite fresh in zone 3 and you've just absorbed that workload without you being too taxing obviously that'll that come over time you know you're not, not going to feel like that first effort or the first session so uh yeah, just take it, take it as it comes. You know, we're all individuals at different levels. So just see how you feel doing the session for the first time. And hopefully the second time you do it and the third time you do it and so on, you'll slowly start to feel feel better and find it easier to absorb those uh, spikes. Okay, another minute and we'll complete our our next spike. So of the of the each 12 minute block we've got three spikes in each. So we've done one. So in total in this session we've got six spikes. And there are a few bonus sprints at the end that I haven't mentioned yet, but we'll we'll cover those later. Okay guys, so we've got 20 seconds of zone 5 coming up shortly, and again you've got to keep the pressure on in your zone 3 right up until that spike starts, I don't think you can get a, you can cheat the system by having a little recovery, a few seconds, keep the pressure on, back to the drops for me, here we go. Back into zone three. Just settle back into your rhythm now. So you've got three and a half minutes left in zone three. Then one more spike to finish this first block. And then we've got a couple of minutes recovery. That's it guys, nice and smooth. All the power transfer should be coming from below your hips. Nice and smooth, that's it. That's good. I 
in the end, just uh, going to talk about this low cadence work, why we do it. So, to perform in any given event or any given day, or just go out with your friends and you know be quite strong and feel good. You, ultimately, you need to be to really perform. You have to be fresh. You have to be a trained athlete. I have to have a, 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 a short taper and uh, and be, be fresh come come event day. And in order to be fresh and perform, obviously you need to go through a significant workload, stress your body, all that good stuff. Now we all need an element of speed, so speed and power. All these attributes are really really important. So for the racing cyclist, you know, unless you're fast. You're going to struggle with all those surges and accelerations out, out of bends and roundabouts and the like. And even on a, 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 I don't know, a local club run with, with mates or a summer chain gang, you know, it's speed really that's going to be the deciding factor between those guys at the end. So speed is important for everyone to, to varying levels. In order, but in order to be fast, you obviously need to be able to produce yeah, a lot of power. So without without being powerful athletes, having that explosive power in you, you you're not going to be able to be, be fast. And in order to be powerful, you have to be strong. So you can't be yeah, powerful and explosive unless you're inherently strong. So it all starts really with, with strength. And that's exactly what this session is, is making you making you strong. So working at this low low cadence enables us to recruit a lot of muscle fibres. So more muscle fibers than you can at a higher cadence. And often new muscle fibers as well. So when you're fine tuning your pedaling stroke, just trying to pedal around the bottom and focus on dragging the pedals up on the, on the back stroke, you may be recruiting some new muscles or certainly yeah, stressing them more than you would normally. So uh, yeah, we could become a stronger athlete, um, more muscle mass, uh, and then over time then you work through training to turn that strength into power and speed all part of a structured training program and here we go the final spike Okay, good job. Good job. So that is the end of block one. So hopefully you've all got your fans on. If anything like me, it's getting pretty warm in here. So get that fan on and get a drink, get a drink down you. Get those liquids down. Because again, in, indoors, you you really do sweat a lot and uh, you're losing a lot of liquid. So important to replenish that, both during or before, during and after really. So before you're going to do a Zwift session or any training session, you should be you're well hydrated on the bike then you know, make sure you're topping up the liquids and as soon as you finish it's often amazing how much liquid you can use up lose actually so yeah after your ride make sure you recover well and part of that recovery is staying hydrated so just trying to recover here now so the whole purpose of this bit now is simply to recover in order to, to be able to train again in a few minutes. There's no point in riding harder than you should be here. You know, you're not going to be training hard or get more training benefit. It's just a waste of effort really. And it'll be, it'll be a detriment to, to the efforts we, we're going to complete shortly. So another minute. A little stretch. A 
Jubbly jubbly. So 30, 30 seconds time, we're going to start our second 12 minute block, which is exactly the same as the previous block. So yeah, 12 minutes split up into three four minute chunks. It was, th was all zone three. And the end of every four minute block, there's a 20 second spike in zone five. So we're very much working aerobically with the zone three stuff. And then uh, the increased effort in the spikes, obviously that's anaerobic, but you shouldn't create too much oxygen debt. Okay guys, zone three. You shouldn't create too much oxygen jet debt because it's only short. So you should recover pretty quickly. And again, it's all at this low cadence, guys. So 55 to 60 revs, if your, your knees and your joints can take it. So if you're feeling any sort of pain or twinges, you know, back straight off, and just complete, complete the same effort, um, but just a higher cadence. So the power, the power output still apply. So you'll still be riding in zone three with the zone five spike. The, foot, the session won't quite be as, as focused on strength. It'll be more just general, general fitness, which this time of year is a great thing to be doing. And just building that muscular endurance and being really, really, really time efficient. You know, we're going to do a 40 odd minute session here, which isn't too taxing, but you're getting some real, real quality work here. Whereas if you were to try and replicate that on the road, you're going you're gonna to need a good few hours really to get the same training stress and the, uh, the same training benefit as you would with today on Zwift. Especially this time of year, you know, people got lots going on with family, friends, out doing stuff. Chances of getting out for five hours on the bike, I presume are pretty slim, unless you're one of the, one of the lucky ones. So yeah, Turbo Zwift is all yeah, great ways to to train hard, train smartly, um, really. But getting the most out of the time you have available, which is what we're all about at Rowan King. So we're a coaching company, and now our, our motto really is quality over quantity, and don't train, train more, train smarter. So you know, people who just go out and. Just, or always adding an extra hour on or just pushing on a little bit zone three all the time where you should be riding in zone two nice and steady you know you may think you're training harder and more gains but often you're not it's false economy yeah, that's good guys Again, that cadence, just keep your cadence 55 to 60 revs and keep checking your power output so making sure you're in zone 3. We've got a spike coming up shortly. In 40 minutes, we'll have a little spike. And that'll be a zone 5 spike for 20 seconds. Okay guys, we're going to go in 10 seconds, you can see the marker ahead of you, the red marker, there it is, we'll we take this jogger, okay, here we go, Okay guys, back into zone three.
But if you just completed that spike and you're completely gassed, chances are you've done it a, bit, a little bit too hard. I mean, it's zone five, so it's not a maximum effort sprint. So the important thing is to make sure you are in and around zone five. It's pretty hard to gauge over short effort, but you should be able to get it pretty accurate. And you're, you're not going flat out, you're not trying to do an all out sprint. It's just a spike. And then we settle back into the rest of our session. So what did everyone get for Christmas or what did they do for Christmas? Anything anything cool, different, exciting? I spent it in Cardiff with uh, with my wife, Danny, and her parents. They come around and we cooked, uh, cooked a nice meal. And then went round my brother's house, Luke, to see him in the night with the rest of my family. And, um, and his wife Kath, their family as well, so busy all day, but a great one. No real standout presents this year actually. It's not this about presents, you know, what have you got? Got your health and got Zwift. What more do you want, eh? Okay guys, another minute 50 left of zone 3. And uh, there's bound to be a few people on Zwift today who are Zwift newbies, having got Zwift for Christmas maybe. So if that's, if that's you and you're watching, welcome. It's probably a bit hard to take in what's going on, there's so many so many cool features and so much to learn about Zwift, but uh, I'm sure you'll pick it up over time. It's all pretty straightforward once you've got the basics understood. If you are finding this session a little bit tough, on the left hand side you can adjust the efforts using the up and down arrows where it says percentage. In fact I'm not feeling too great today so if I'm honest I've, uh, I've reduced my percentage from 100% of my normal FTP down to 90. So I've got a little, uh, I've got a little cheat on the go. But again, it's not, I say a cheat, it's not really a cheat, it's just being, just being smart. Because there's no point in just smashing through a session, or trying way too hard uh, compared to what you should be, and digging yourself a hole if you don't feel, feel great. And that's if you don't feel great in terms of your health, so if you've got a little bit of a bug maybe, or you've done a bit more training in the last few days than you planned and you're a bit too fatigued. Whatever it is, you know, don't be afraid to recognise that and adjust the intensity of the effort. And that goes for any session you do anywhere. So don't don't bow to peer pressure out with your mates. You know, be the smart guy. Okay guys, here comes another spike. Okay, that's good. Let's have a little stretch but while maintaining that zone 3 effort. Just settle back into it now. Get your cadence around 55 to 60 revs a minute. Real efficient pedaling stroke. Pedaling right around the stroke. Keep the body as still as you can. And let all that, that power transfer come from your legs. You don't want to be pulling on the handlebars and generating force that way. Let it all come from the legs. And just keep a check of your power output. So you should be in your zone 3. And there's a guide on the left hand side. I'm sure you've all figured that out by now. Uh, give them a 30 minutes into the session.
keep your composure. It's a great little tip that. You know, we're high and heading towards the back end of this session. It's easy to let your, let your form and your focus drift. But you know, it's equally important. This, this minute now, so the last couple of minutes of this, this block, equally as important as the first couple of minutes. So, you know, make sure you're only on the, only on drift for 40 minutes here, 42 minutes. So let's make every second count. Just keep an eye, make sure your power is where it should be. Make sure your cadence is too. That's a good job, guys. Suck it up. Someone the other day suggested this session felt like, or described it like riding through treacle, or riding through mud. And I don't think that's far wrong. If anyone's ever ridden a mountain bike, when you go and have a steep climb and you hit a bit of boggy mud, you literally feel like You've got to put everything into each pedal stroke just to claw your way slowly into by inch up, up, a, up an ascent. That's kind of what this, this feels like, although it's not quite as intense as that. It is tough to, uh, tough to ride this low cadence, but there's a purpose for the session. So we're not just aimlessly riding at low cadence. There's structure here. There's a real quality training element. So don't forget that. Just keep your focus now, guys. 25 seconds left, then we've got the final spike. Good job. Okay, guys, brace yourself. Okay. Okay, good job. Good job, good job. Okay, got three minutes now of recovery. So really back off now. Time to recover. So that's 24, 24 minutes of quality effort we've completed there, guys. We've only been on the turbo 33 minutes. That's nine minutes of warming up, recovering, and the rest of it's been total quality. So to finish the session off, we've got a few bonus sprints. Everyone loves a little bonus surprise present at Christmas, so this is my present to all of you. Three 10 second sprints. And again, these are max effort sprints. Um, at, at your chosen cadence, so this is your chance to really get some rev outs going, you know, get the cadence really high, and then uh, it's really important actually not to spend too much time riding at, uh, at a low cadence, so there's great training benefits there, but if you do it too much, you get you know, your body gets very used to riding at that low cadence, so then come riding on the road or event day, when you've got to make some accelerations, Maybe a bit alien to you then when you've got to put in those uh, those higher higher cadence, faster, more powerful efforts. So again, it's great as part of a structured training program. You know, this is a, a phase we're going through, so we're kind of working on strength here. But you've got to be mindful that, of having yeah some uh, some higher cadence efforts and some power and speed specific sessions later on to to balance out really your. Uh, your, your training session otherwise you might get a bit a bit sluggish and a bit a bit kind of mono paced any, any questions anyone's got on that topic feel free to send me an email it's matt at contact at rowanking.com so yeah send the address the email to me matt and the email address contact at rowanking.com so guys 30 seconds and then we're going to complete our first of three 10 second sprints. And the cadence, well, that's up to you.
and again you shouldn't be really be looking at the power output here because it is a max effort and same with cadence you no know, there's no target cadence there's no target power so it's just put your head down 10 seconds and let's see what you got so we're going five Good job. Okay guys, now we will cover. We will cover now. So another 25 seconds and we go again. For the second sprint. Here we go, max sprint coming up. Here we go. Good job, well done. So another 30 seconds easy recovery. And then we go again for our final sprint. One more 10 second effort. And that's gonna round off our, our training session today. And don't let this last effort be anything substandard compared to the rest. Equally as important. And we've got one more effort to go, guys. So let's just commit and try and knock it out of the park. Here we go. Good job. Nice one. Whew. There we go guys, that's almost 40 minutes we've done. We've got a four minute warm down. Just three and a half minutes left. And then we can have a shower change, we're back on the mince pies. Ah, it's good. That's certainly woken me up. Oh, God. Nice one, guys. You've got three minutes to cool down. So we've done the, uh, done the hard work, done the training elements section. And now we're just cooling down, starting that recovery process. So just shaking some of the lactic out of our legs and just getting some blood flow into the legs just to yeah, start that recovery process. So important to keep cool now guys, make sure that fan's on. Have a drink. Give yourself a pat on the back. That's good. So once we're done here guys, I really recommend you jump off, have a quick shower and then get some uh, get something to eat down here. Now it's only, uh, only, only a 45 minute session, so you haven't got to be doing, you haven't got to be eating loads and loads and loads to start your recovery off, but you know, there has been stress placed on your muscles, your muscles will have broken down and they'll be crying out for fuel now to help them uh, recover. So just protein, make sure you get some protein down here, um, also some carbohydrates, and again, nothing, you haven't got to go overboard, but maybe 20 grams of protein would be good, a good idea, um, I know it's fairly generic, depending on your, your weight of course, but, you know, 
let's not get too hung up on it for, for this simple session. So get some protein down you, carbohydrates, and of course rehydrate. Big pipe squash or something like that is a great idea. Maybe even an, an electro tab. For the last minute guys, I'm going to send some ride-ons. So I'm going to try and share the love a little bit. There we go, 40 seconds left. Any, any comments and thoughts about that session? You know, whether you thought it was good, bad or indifferent? Feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and I'll uh, I'll pick them up and I'll respond to you. Yeah, it's always great to hear what what riders and participants make of our sessions, as we just try to try to improve and make them more more enjoyable for everyone participating. So, yeah, for me, thanks for joining us or joining me. I uh, hope you had a good workout, a merry Christmas, and a happy New Year.